The show opens with a picture scene at a park where our main characters, the beautiful Xiao Tu and the handsome Ling, engage in a heartfelt conversation. Ling leans closer to Xiao Tu, asking about her university admission and expressing his wish for her always to be by his side. The scene then takes a nostalgic turn, transporting us back to their shared childhood. Xiao Tu finally recounts that she and Ling were born in the latter part of 1997, mere months apart. Their families were so close that they considered each other as godparents of their children, and their bond was very much like typical siblings. However, Ling refused to acknowledge Xiao Chu as an elder sister because of their constant competition for their mother's attention and her uncanny knack for getting into trouble. As a result, they ended up being both close friends and occasional rivals. The show then fast-forwards to their high school days. Xiao Chu finds herself academically challenged, which earns her a top-grade scolding from her disappointed parents. Adding salt to the wound, Ling reveals her last place class ranking. This enrages Xiao Tu's mother so much, she kicks her out of the house. With nowhere else to go, Xiao Tu turns to her godmother's house for refuge. Ling's mother not only welcomes her, but also brings her a pair of luxurious slippers. Unfortunately, this single gesture ignites a jealous rivalry in Ling. The next day on their way to school, Xiao Tu reminds Ling that his mother's birthday is coming up and asks if he's made any plans. Ling replies that he still has time, but then asks her to help him choose a gift for his mother. Later, Xiao Tu's classmate Jiang shares a concerning story with her. She talks about a trio of assholes wreaking havoc in the city. However, Jiang is explaining all this while using her phone in class, and when the teacher suddenly enters the room, she snatches the phone away. Jiang tries to explain and pleads for her to return it, but the teacher says she can only get it back after their final exam. Seeing her friend upset, Xiao Tu lends her her own phone, but in doing this, she misses a message from Ling saying he's already gone home. Later, Xiao Tu, who is already scared by the uptick in crime, spots Ling's bicycle on the ground with some drops that look like blood. She jumps to the conclusion that he's in danger, so she takes his bicycle and rushes to find him. Meanwhile, Ling returns home and realizes that Xiao Tu hasn't returned yet, so he becomes concerned and goes out to search for her. He checks a few shops and finds out that she's already been there asking about him. After some confusion, Ling finally finds Xiao Tu under a bridge surrounded by three tough-looking guys. He sees one of them holding a knife close to her. Worried, Ling tries to approach him from behind in an attempt to help Xiao Tu. However, he soon realizes that they were just joking around. Afterward, Xiao Tu explains that she's friends with the guys and they head back home together, and on the way, it starts raining. At home, when they try to dry off using a towel, Ling ends up sharing the same towel with Xiao Tu. He keeps stealing glances at her and it's evident that his feelings for her are evolving. The next day at school, Xiao Tu is unexpectedly chosen to be a part of the labor committee. Her new responsibility involves keeping the school surroundings clean, and she takes it very seriously. While she's busy with the committee, Ling shows up with his classmate, Zhang Min, for an inspection. He spots a piece of plastic hanging from a tree branch and suggests that Xiao Tu should pick it up. When her heroine tries to do so, she slips and falls, tearing her pants in the process. Ling quickly comes to her aid in this embarrassing moment. He ties his jacket around her waist and takes Xiao Tu away, which makes the other girls envious of such a consideration. Back at home, Xiao Tu joins her mother in the kitchen. Just like at school, she becomes anal like an official inspector. Unfortunately, this annoys the hell out of her parents. Feeling a little bit low, Xiao Tu goes next door to visit Ling. Ling's mom is happy to hear that Xiao Tu is part of the labor committee and encourages her to do well. But even then, Xiao Tu is feeling obsessed about cleaning. She then goes to Ling's bedroom to clean it up. While doing so, she finds a little secret box hidden under his bed. This brings back memories of their childhood when they used to keep their toys in a similar box. Curious, she opens it only to find a bunch of porn. But Ling quickly covers her mouth, desperate to keep her quiet. He begs her to keep it a secret and offers to do anything in return. The following day, Jiang asks Xiao Tu to help her recover her phone from Teacher Shua's office. Our heroine reluctantly agrees, but she uses Ling's little secret as leverage to convince him to cooperate. When the teacher is called away for a meeting, Xiao Tu and Ling sneak into the staff room through a window. While they're searching, another classmate named Jinzi walks in on them. Xiao Tu explains the situation, and Yinzi agrees to help. Just as Xiao Tu is about to get the phone, Teacher Shua suddenly catches them in the act. Ling makes a quick excuse and leaves, while Yinzi claims that he's there to submit a competition form. Ultimately, Xiao Tu ends up taking the blame for the phone theft and is removed from her position on the labor committee. Afterward, at home, Xiao Tu is frustrated and throws things in anger. But as soon as her parents arrive, and after her mother orders, she quickly tidies up. Soon, she's given the task of delivering fruit to Ling's house, and Xiao Tu agrees. 
Later, when she delivers the package, she confronts him aggressively. He shuts her down by showing Jiang's phone and advising her to be nice. As soon as she sees the phone, she begs him to give it to her. Liang says he lied to the teacher claiming that the phone was his and he brought it by mistake. Xiao Tu promises to keep the secret about the box and shows her gratitude by peeling an apple for Ling. In the next scene, news about gangs attacking people spreads, causing Ling to worry about his mother, Wen Hui, who is working late. He decides to pick her up after work and Xiao Tu insists on joining him. Unexpectedly, they witness her getting into a luxury car with a strange man outside her workplace. Ling jumps to the conclusion that his mother might be having a new romantic relationship. Stunned, he stands by the road for a moment. Sensing his anxiety, Xiao Tu playfully encourages him to head home and says that the guy might simply be her boss. Back at home, Ling has a dream where his mother introduces him to her new partner and asks for his blessing to marry him. Startled, he wakes up to find Xiao Tu teasing him about his nightmare. Later, Ling contemplates how to broach the topic with his mother. He eventually asks her about her day, hoping to find a way into the conversation. His mother seems to have something to say too, but changes the subject quickly and leaves the room. Amidst their hesitations to be open and honest, misunderstandings begin to brew. The following day after school, Ling asks Xiao Chu to assist him in picking out a birthday gift for his mother. She agrees, and they embark on this task together. Along the way, they spot a jewelry store with a discount sign and decide to check it out. To be eligible for a bigger discount, they participate in a store team-based challenge. Surprisingly, they work together seamlessly and earn a substantial discount. However, during the final question to secure a 40% discount, Xiao Tu realizes that the question is about fathers and decides to avoid it for Ling's sake. Getting a gift for his mother, the staff assumes they are a couple, but Xiao Tu clarifies that they're just neighbors. As the evening sets in, Wen Hui is delighted with the gift. Feeling a surge of emotion, she makes up her mind to share a secret with him and asks if he's interested in meeting someone special. In the next scene, teacher Xue grows irritated by the gossip and chatter between Xiao Tu and Jiang in the classroom. Because of this, he decides to separate them and rearrange their seating, placing them next to two talented boys, Jian Si and Yin Zi. After a while, Xiao Tu strikes up a conversation with Yin Zi and discovers that he's upset about not being able to outshine Ling in studies and other competitions. Later at night, the thought of the world ending soon lingers in Xiao Chu's mind, keeping her awake. Afraid and unable to sleep, she reaches out to Ling, disturbing his peace. The next day after school, Ling notices his mother preparing something and asks about it. She reveals that a special guest is coming over for dinner. Just then, the guest arrives, and to Ling's surprise, it's his father who has been away for many years. This unexpected encounter catches him completely off guard. Ling Bo, his father, has become a successful entrepreneur and has returned home. But for Ling, his father's absence during his teenage years has created a confusing dynamic. He struggles with this sudden turn of events, making the atmosphere awkward and uncomfortable. When the tension becomes too much, Ling walks out of the house. In the next scene, Xiao Tu decides to help mend Ling's relationship with his father. She understands that years of yearning and resentment can't be fixed with a simple apology, and the gaps and disappointment from his childhood can't be bridged overnight. So instead of pressuring Ling to reconcile, Xiao Tu believes that giving him time to process everything might be more beneficial. The following day, Yinzi confronts Xiao Tu and asks her if she and Ling are romantically involved. Surprised, our heroine clarifies that they're just neighbors and childhood friends. Hearing this, Yinzi extends his hand for friendship and offers to help Xiao Chu improve her grades and excel in her exams. It turns out that Yinzi's biggest aspiration is to surpass Ling, and getting to know him through Xiao Chu is his way of understanding his competition better. Xiao Chu is puzzled by the sudden friendship, but after a bit of thinking, she assumes that Yinzi might simply have a crush on her. After school, Yinzi notices Ling and Xiao Chu walking home together and becomes suspicious about their relationship. He then has his driver follow them. Unfortunately for Yinzi, Ling becomes aware of this and changes their usual route. When Xiao Chu questions Ling about this sudden change, he reveals that he thinks someone is following them. After a while, Ling hides behind a wall to check, only to see Yinzi in the car. While he is shocked, Xiao Chu giddily claims that Yinzi is her secret admirer. Seeing her pleasure in all of this, Ling becomes envious and cautions her to be careful. He then starts to take note of Yinzi, someone he typically wouldn't pay much attention to. From this moment, the game is on between them. At home during dinner with her parents, Xiao Tu is seen chatting with Yinzi and making plans for a date. Ling observes this and talks to his friend, arranging to meet at the same place where Xiao Tu and Yinzi are planning to go. The next day, Xiao Tu and Yinzi are enjoying desserts at a restaurant when our heroine bluntly asks if he likes her. Yinzi is taken aback and responds that he only considers her a friend and has no special feelings. 
After leaving the restaurant, they coincidentally run into Ling and his group. Together, they all decide to go shopping, and Ling ends up purchasing a special dress for Xiao Tu. Later, Xiao Tu returns home to find a table filled with chocolates and gifts. Curious, she asks, and learns that Ling's father sent them to her. Xiao Tu's parents attempt to explain that Ling's father only left the family in pursuit of success, which he did indeed accomplish. They then plead with her to talk to Ling and help him understand and forgive his father. The following day, Yinzi joins Ling and Xiao Tu on his new bicycle as they head home. However, on their way, Ling notices they're being followed again. Annoyed, he approaches the car, only to learn that it's his own dad. Ling Bo says that he's been visiting their home and is very happy to see his son. But Ling rudely tells his father to stay away, accusing him of following him. He vents his hurt and frustration by tearing a strip off his father for leaving the family when they needed him the most. He also accuses his father of stalking him and basically tells him to piss off. Meanwhile, Xiao Tu brings Yinzi home as a guest, showing consideration for Ling's dignity and privacy. However, Yinzi is treated to a whirlwind of experiences. He becomes visibly nervous and uncomfortable during the meal. Xiao Tu's dad, who has reservations about Ling, finds Yinzi's sincere attitude quite appealing. However, Xiao Chu's mom and Ling's mom are more critical of him. Later that night when Yinzi is about to leave, both Xiao Chu and Ling come to see him off. However, they learn that Yinzi's bike has been stolen. Xiao Chu then generously lends him her bicycle so he can return home. After he leaves, Ling takes the opportunity to express his doubt about Yinzi's intentions, suggesting that he might be using her for personal gain. The next morning, Ling and Xiao Chu ride the same bicycle to school, and their classmate, Zhang Min, encounters them. However, upon seeing Zhang Min, Ling pedals faster and distances himself from her. At school, Xiao Tu tells Jiang everything that's been happening. The latter suggests that Zhang Min might have feelings for Ling and might have felt jealous seeing them together. Xiao Tu initially denies this, but when she overhears Zhang Min commenting on her relationship with Ling, she confronts her and clarifies that they're just good friends. In the following scene at the Dojong, Xiao Tu challenges Yinzi to a Taekwondo match. Unexpectedly, Yinzi reveals that he doesn't know how to fight and is defenseless against Xiao Tu's attacks. After a friendly bout, he escorts her home. To alleviate her fear of the dark, he sings a beautiful song along the way. During their conversation, Yinzi shares that it's his dream to become a singer, but will have to give up his dream to live up to his family's expectations and take over the family business. Elsewhere, despite not being accepted by his son, Ling Bo continues to spend time at the house. But to avoid making Ling uncomfortable, he always leaves before he returns home from school. Ling notices this and deliberately comes home late to avoid seeing his father. Later that night, when Xiao Tu returns home with Yinzi, Ling notices them and once again voices his concern, suggesting that she distance herself from Yinzi. However, Xiao Tu remains firm, telling him to stay out of her personal matters. The scene then shifts to a moment when Xiao Chu is enjoying a party at her house with her friends, including Yinzi. Ling unexpectedly shows up and questions why he wasn't invited to the gathering. Xiao Tu quickly comes up with an excuse for not having extra slippers and welcomes him in. During the party, they engage in a game of truth or dare. When Yinzi has to expose the truth, he admits that he's been following Xiao Tu for weeks and is glad to finally be friends with her. Hearing this, Ling recalls scolding his father for incessantly following him and realizes that it was actually Yinzi, not his father, who had been following him. Later that day, Ling is at home when his father arrives. Just like always, he silently leaves to avoid interaction. It turns out that Wen Hui is ill, and Ling Bo is there to take care of her. Meanwhile, Xiao Tu's mother gives her a lecture, emphasizing the importance of working hard towards her career and fulfilling her dreams. As Xiao Tu appears confused, her father supports her, leading to an argument with her mother. Angry, the father leaves the house and goes to a park where he sits on a bench. Interestingly, Ling is also at the same park waiting for it to get dark. He notices Xiao Chu's father alone and asks if he's there to escape his problems. When the latter confirms, they unexpectedly find a shared connection. The next day, Xiao Chu brings a camera to school and with their friends, starts a discussion about their dreams. Even the head teacher joins the conversation. During the evening, Ling is in Xiao Chu's room looking at his house, waiting for his father to leave. Xiao Chu suggests he forgive his father and accept him. Later, when Ling notices that his father's car is gone, he starts walking home. However, at that moment, Ling Bo returns unexpectedly. It turns out he had gone to buy medicine for his ailing wife. Here, Ling reflects on how his mother had raised him single-handedly for years without wavering and realizes that right now, his mother actually needs his father's care. So he takes the initiative to break the ice and invites his father back home. With this, Ling Bo finally returns to the family fold. The next day, Teacher Shue announces the upcoming parent-teacher meetings at school. We learn that Xiao Tu's parents are out of town, and as a result, Wen Hui will be attending the PT meeting on their behalf. 
As the preparations for the event continue, Wen Hui suggests to Ling Bo that he should attend the meeting as a representative for their son. Later, there's a hilarious moment when Yin Zi's mother accidentally enters the wrong classroom and briefly compares herself to Wen Hui, who is playing the role of Xiao Tu's mother. Meanwhile, on the school ground, the students are preoccupied with the thoughts of the upcoming PT meetings. In an attempt to lighten the mood, Yin Zi playfully mimics his parents' behavior. Xiao Tu begins to mimic Wen Hui's behavior, and Ling plays along by portraying his dad's, engaging in a playful interaction with her. Seeing this seemingly harmonious couple, Yin Zi can't help but feel a twinge of jealousy. Afterward, gossip about Wen Hui representing Xiao Tu at the PT meetings quickly spreads throughout the school. The students begin assuming that Ling's mother is Xiao Tu's stepmother. Exaggerated versions of their relationship get fed through the gossip mill. Due to her association with Ling and the previous rumors involving Yin Zi, Xiao Tu becomes the focus of whispers and gossip. Initially, she just wants to distance herself from everything. However, our hero, unfazed by the gossip, approaches her and advises her to stay composed, then offers to accompany her home. Later, when he goes to her place to meet her, he discovers that Xiao Tu is chatting with Yin Zi. Ling encourages her to focus on her studies and even provides her with a lesson in one of the subjects. While going through her notes, Ling notices that Xiao Tu's school bag contains carefully organized notes from Yin Zi, suggesting that their relationship is closer than he had realized. The following day at school, Ling notices the two walking together and becomes concerned. He then decides to follow them and join them during their lunch break. On the other hand, Yin Zi interprets Ling's caution as genuine care for Xiao Tu. He is pleased that his rival is finally taking him seriously. This newfound motivation prompts Yin Zi to study harder, hoping to surpass Ling's accomplishments. Later, while Ling is studying in the classroom, the girl who has a massive crush on him, Zhang Min, approaches him with a gift. However, Ling politely declines the offer, stating that he doesn't need it. One of the classmates, Wen Yu, observes this from afar and later confronts Ling about why he rejected the gift. Wen Yu admits that he was the one who had gotten the gift for her, as he likes Zhang Min and wanted to impress her. In response, Ling criticizes his actions, encouraging him to value himself and focus on his studies, rather than compromising his self-respect for someone else's sake. Hearing this, Wen Yu gets angry and he impulsively punches Ling in the face. Surprisingly, our hero remains calm and walks away without retaliating. In the next scene, Yin Zi is preparing for a movie date with Xiao Tu. However, when Ling arrives home with a bruised face, her priorities shift. She forgets about her plans with Yin Zi and focuses solely on tending to Ling's injuries. This causes Yin Zi to wait outside the theater in the cold, ultimately catching a cold himself. The next morning at school, Wen Yu notices Ling's discomfort while drinking because of the wound and apologizes for his actions. He then offers Ling another drink, this time with a straw. At the same time, Xiao Tu learns that Yin Zi has fallen ill and immediately remembers the movie date they had planned the day before. Feeling guilty, she calls him as soon as she gets home and apologizes for leaving him waiting in the cold. She explains that she was tending to Ling's injuries. When Yin Zi asks about a relationship with Ling, Xiao Tu describes him as her best friend. Yin Zi shows understanding, but deep inside, he feels sad and lonely instead. During winter vacation, Jiang visits Xiao Tu's house to work on their assignment. Xiao Tu comes to see her off, and this is when our heroine spots her childhood sweetheart, Yu Jun, standing by the entranceway, playing the violin. It turns out Yu Jun is preparing to launch a business venture with his sibling, Xu Ling. Xiao Tu seizes every opportunity to interact with Yu Jun. She even invites Xu Ling to study together during vacation. Xu Ling, on the other hand, agrees to bring her sibling only if Xiao Tu also invites Ling, setting up a situation where Xiao Tu will be with Yu Jun and Xu Ling with Ling. Xiao Tu agrees and without hesitation visits Ling at his house requesting his help with the assignment. At first, he is reluctant, but eventually gives in due to her persistence. The scene then shifts to a time when they are all together working on their vacation assignment. During this period, Xu Ling keeps stealing glances at Ling, and Xiao Tu is equally attentive to Yu Jun. During this period, Xu Ling keeps stealing glances at Ling, and Xiao Tu is equally attentive to Yu Jun. After a while, Yu Jun invites him to a fried chicken restaurant and orders non-alcoholic beer for everyone. Xiao Tu mistakenly attributes her altered state to the alcohol, when it's actually the effect of cold medicine. She pretends to be under the influence of alcohol, playfully expressing her affection for Yu Jun, which triggers a hint of jealousy in Ling. The next day, Ling Bo decides to purchase a villa without consulting his son. Ling strongly objects to this idea and retreats to his room in frustration. Xiao Tu learns about the situation, but decides to give Ling space, respecting his stubborn nature. Although she initially aims to intervene and dissuade Ling Bo, she realizes that the new house might provide a better environment for her friend. 
This leaves Xiao Tu conflicted as she prepares herself for the possibility of being separated from Ling. But unbeknownst to her, he has no intention of leaving. Influenced by Xiao Tu, Ling's father recalls the wonderful memories they shared in the old house and decides to stay, choosing to safeguard those precious moments with his family. As the new semester begins, Xiao Tu is determined to study hard, inspired by Yejun's success in business. However, due to her weak academic foundation, her progress is minimal at best. Meanwhile, Jiang notices her father's phone ringing and answers it, only to find a woman on the other end who is waiting for her father at a restaurant. At school, when teacher Xu Wei realizes that Ling is absent from the classroom, he calls Xiao Tu into his office to ask about his whereabouts. However, our heroine claims that she has no idea and leaves. Around the same time, Xiao Tu's classmate Jia Si informs the teacher that Jiang is also missing. Shortly after, Xiao Tu, Jia Si, and Yinzi set out to find Jiang and spot her heading towards a restaurant. In her rush, Xiao Tu starts running towards the road, but Ling arrives just in time to hold her hand, urging her to be cautious. Afterward, Jiang eventually reaches the restaurant and observes her father being engaged in a conversation with a young woman. Misunderstanding the situation, she jumps to conclusions, assuming that her father is being unfaithful to her mother. Despite her friends trying to stop her, she confronts him rudely. However, Jiang soon learns that the woman is actually a tutor being arranged for her, leaving her embarrassed. Meanwhile, Yinzi enters the restroom and is followed by a man who hands him a business card before leaving. When questioned, the man simply responds with the card and departs. Later, when Yinzi rejoins the group, he asks for their assistance in verifying the authenticity of the card. Ling checks online and confirms its legitimacy. It's from an entertainment company. Excited, Xiao Tu encourages Yinzi to contact the company and pursue his dream of becoming a singer. Yinzi is apprehensive due to his parents' likely disapproval. However, Xiao Tu pushes him to give it a shot. In the next scene, Ling is diligently preparing for his university entrance exam, and Xiao Tu supports him. With his continuous hard work and dedication, Ling successfully gains admission to Yunhai University, where he selects computer science as his major. Jiang also determines her career path, aspiring to study journalism. In contrast, Xiao Tu is still unsure about her future. After much deliberation, she begins her preparations to enter the same university as Ling. However, due to numerous setbacks, she feels discouraged and on the brink of giving up. Fortunately, Yijun frequently sends her motivating messages, restoring her confidence and encouraging her to persevere. Unbeknownst to her, these messages are orchestrated by Ling himself. One evening, as Xiao Tu is alone at school, Ling makes a special return. He encourages her for the upcoming exam, and they sit together in his old classroom, chatting beneath the winter night sky. Ling expresses his hope that Xiao Tu will successfully join the same university as him, as they had promised earlier. After this, they both reaffirm their commitment to continue their journey together, studying at the same university. On the day of the entrance exam, Ling makes a special effort to accompany her. After she enters the college, Ling is approached for an interview and is asked if he's there to support his sister. Annoyed, he quickly clarifies that Xiao Tu isn't his sister and expresses his desire for both of them to attend the same university and be together. Xiao Tu does her best in the exam and comes out to see Ling waiting for her with an ice cream in his hand. After a few days, we learn that Xiao Tu has received her highest score ever. However, it does fall slightly short of the admission cutoff for Yunhai University. Though initially disheartened and after thoughtful consideration and a conversation with Ling, Xiao Tu decides to take a chance and apply for the journalism department at Yunhai University anyway. Meanwhile, Ling can't control himself. He desperately hopes Xiao Tu will get into Yunhai University, or at least a university in the same city, so they can continue their daily interactions. He quickly returns home and takes Xiao Tu for a walk by the lake. During this stroll, the energy between them intensifies. Ling slowly approaches Xiao Tu, and their hearts beat faster. This is the same scene from the beginning of the show. Sensing the tension in the atmosphere, Xiao Tu playfully shoulder tosses Ling into the lake. After this, she leaves him in the water and proceeds to go to the university to register on her own. The scene then shifts to the university where Xiao Tu enters room 404, a mixed dormitory of students from various majors. To her surprise, she encounters Jiang, who is also pursuing journalism at the same university. Furthermore, her academic rival, Xu Ling, is assigned to the same room. As they mingle, another student, CMO, a classical dance major, enters with a senior named Sun Shibo. After formal introductions, Sun Shibo warmly invites them all to an evening social event. Later on, Ling calls Xiao Tu and asks to meet downstairs. When they meet, he asks her why she tossed him into the water. Xiao Tu responds by advising him not to get too close to her again. Just then, both their phones go off, reminding them about the upcoming gathering with their friends. Next, 
The group gathers for the party, and to Xiao Tu's surprise, Sun Shibo turns out to be Ling's roommate. They can be seen hanging out and having fun. However, Xiao Tu is still a little pissed at her hero, so at the dining table, she pretends not to know him. During a game of truth or dare, Xiao Tu loses and is assigned the task of getting contact information from a stranger at the bar. Nervous and anxious, she approaches the guy and is amazed when he politely provides his contact information. However, as she tries to note down his number, her mobile phone turns off, prompting him to write the number on her hand. Ling observing this becomes jealous and pretends to be drunk to get Xiao Tu's attention. As he'd hoped, Xiao Chu comes over to him and together with his friend, helps him back to his dorm. Capitalizing on the moment when Xiao Chu is concerned about him, Ling discreetly wipes away the phone number from her hand. She walks him back to his dorm where Ling pretends to be intoxicated, creating an ambiguous atmosphere. He draws closer to her and she feels her face flush and her heart race in response. Afterwards, Xiao Tu returns to her dorm, only to find her roommates waiting outside as they've lost their room keys. They check with Xia Mo, who has the key, and decide to retrace her steps in order to locate them. Unfortunately, the darkness hampers their efforts, and they're forced to ask the warden for an extra key. Meanwhile, Ling is in his room, reminiscing about the time he spent with Xiao Tu. In the following scene, the university students' union calls for volunteers from the journalism class, and Liang Hu, the same guy who gave Xiao Chu his number at the bar, enters the class to select a student. Unaware of his identity, Xiao Chu playfully raises her hand and unintentionally gets chosen as a volunteer. Later, Liang Hu takes her around the campus and asks why she didn't reach out to him. Xiao Chu explains that she took his number only to fulfill the dare and nothing else. One day, someone hacks into Ling's social media account and makes a post claiming that he is currently dating two girls. The post even includes Ling's personal number. Worried about him, Xiao Tu invites him to meet at the park. There, she checks Ling's phone and is surprised to find no messages or calls from any unknown numbers. Ling explains that he has blocked all unfamiliar contacts and isn't concerned about the post. The following morning, wanting to spend more time with Xiao Tu, Ling calls her and insists she join him for morning classes. Initially hesitant, she is swayed by the promise of free breakfast and agrees. When she arrives, she is shocked to learn that the guy from the bar, Liang Hu, is also studying computer science in the same class. They engage in a friendly and warm conversation, and Liang Hu invites her to collaborate on a project. As expected, Ling feels jealous over the interaction. Once Liang Hu and Xiao Chu leave, Ling's roommate tells him that he needs to step up before someone else does. This makes our hero think hard, and he eventually realizes that he has to take some action. On Xiao Tu's birthday, Ling codes a sequence of lights in the dormitory building to spell out happy birthday. To make the plan successful, Liang Hu secretly brings Xiao Tu to the area, and just as they arrive, the other lights go off. Ling enters the scene and presents a gift to Xiao Tu in front of all the other classmates. Witnessing all this, Xiao Tu experiences a mix of emotions that she can't entirely comprehend. Later, she reflects on the recent events and Ling's attempts to get closer to her. Seeking guidance online, she anonymously shares her story and is told by the netizens that she might have developed feelings for her childhood friend. With all this on her mind, she starts avoiding Ling. On the other hand, our hero realizes that he just can't stand by, so he decides to take a gentle approach, making his presence felt first. He invites Xiao Tu to lunch outside. However, Liang Hu interrupts their interaction and asks Xiao Tu to help him with a photography project, to which she agrees. In the next scene, Yinzi video calls Xiao Tu to inquire about her experience at the university. During their conversation, Jiang abruptly mentions that Xiao Tu and Ling have been getting closer and seem happy together. This news stings Yinzi, and he ends the call abruptly. Later, Ling assists Xiao Tu in reserving a seat in the library for her final exams, but he ends up falling asleep. Xiao Tu gazes at his sleeping face and finds herself admiring him. She then playfully annoys him to wake up. Unbeknownst to them, someone takes a picture of Ling, crops it, and posts it online. Xiao Tu comes across the photo and feels irritated, mentioning that there was no need to crop her out of the picture. As Ling's birthday approaches, Xiao Tu decides to knit him a scarf as a gift. To do so, she buys the necessary wool from a nearby supermarket and begins knitting. However, she's still uncertain whether Ling shares her romantic inclinations. Later on his birthday, she presents him with the scarf she had knitted. Unfortunately, Ling declines her gift and makes it clear that he doesn't appreciate it. This deeply upsets our heroine, so she decides to give the scarf to her father. After this, she attends Ling's birthday celebration without a gift. Amidst the teasing of their friends, Xiao Tu ends up buying a shirt for Ling. Although they haven't explicitly stated their feelings, their interactions have already taken on a romantic intensity. 
during winter vacation when Xiao Chu returns home, Wen Hui observes the close relationship between her and Ling. She even leaves them alone in the kitchen to prepare lunch together. Later, Xiao Chu meets her parents and gives the aforementioned scarf as a gift. Her parents ask about a romantic life at university, but she responds with a simple no. Meanwhile, in his room, Ling's parents question him about his feelings for Xiao Tu. He admits his fondness for her and agrees with their suggestion to pursue her. While his parents are excited about this confession, they also worry about Ling's limited understanding of romance and wonder if he can win Xiao Tu's heart. In the new semester, Xiao Tu helps organize the mental health symposium alongside Liang Qiu and the rest of the team. At the end of the day, Liang Hu dismisses the others, but asks Xiao Tu to stay back, claiming he has something to discuss with her. However, it becomes clear that he has misunderstood her feelings and is trying to flirt with her. She finds his behavior amusing and firmly states her lack of interest. Despite her clear words, Liang Hu attempts to force himself on her, putting her in an uncomfortable situation. Thankfully, Jiang, who has been looking for her, arrives outside the theater and notices the locked door. She then informs her friends about the situation. Inside the theater, Liang Hu persists, even after Xiao Tu repeatedly asks him to stop. In a crucial moment, Ling enters with his friends from two dormitories. It's revealed that the online persona who hacked and posted on Ling's profile was actually Liang Hu. Without wasting any time, our hero confronts him, kicking him in the face and rescuing Xiao Tu from the uncomfortable situation. In the next scene, Ling takes Xiao Tu out for dinner and invites her to accompany him to the city for a competition. The latter initially hesitates, but after Ling makes a sad face, she agrees. At her dorm room, she warns Jiang not to tell anybody about their plans. During their time in the city, the two explore a night market together, and their chemistry reaches its peak. They come very close to kissing, creating a deeply intimate moment. Later in their hotel room, Xiao Tu opens a box gift from Jiang and finds lingerie inside. However, she seems disgusted and finds the gift inappropriate. At the same time, Ling arrives and starts to dry her hair with a towel. Sensing the right moment, he confesses his love to her. Xiao Tu's response is a blushing smile, clearly indicating that she has feelings for him too. Returning to the university the next day, Xiao Tu informs her roommates that she and Ling are officially dating. However, Xu Ling is not pleased with this news and feels disheartened. Ling also announces the relationship publicly, leading his single friends to express their disappointment. Next, Jiang notices that there's little difference in their behavior before and after they started dating. They don't appear to be a typical couple in love. She then suggests they behave as a couple. Taking Jiang's advice, Xiao Tu decides to change her behavior, attempting to imitate the actions of a girl in love. However, her attempts come across as comical and awkward. Despite this, Ling goes along with her antics, but he secretly hopes she won't change herself too much and stay authentic. Meanwhile, Ling's friends suggest that he take her on a vacation to enjoy a more intimate time together. After this, while Xiao Tu and Jiang are walking together, she receives a call from Jia Si, who asks her not to reveal something to Jiang. Our heroine plays along and leaves Jiang abruptly, claiming she has some work to do. Jiang then tries to call Jia Si, but notices that his line is busy, making her sad. In the following scene, Ling invites Xiao Tu to the park, but she declines, saying that she already has plans to meet someone that day. Curious, Ling asks about it, but she doesn't provide any further details, except that it's a guy. As expected, this worries our hero. Xiao Tu's sudden rejection of his planned date and her reluctance to explain make him suspect she might be losing interest in him. But unbeknownst to Ling, she is actually helping Jia Si and keeping his upcoming confession to Jiang a secret. Later, she lies to Jiang, telling her that she found Ling with some other girl. Hearing this, the latter gets enraged and joins her friend to confront Ling. But just as she reaches there, she realizes that everything is a setup. Jia Si then approaches Jiang and proposes to her, which she happily accepts. During a video call with her parents, they ask her if she has any love interests at the university. Ling also appears in the video call, but Xiao Tu refuses to admit to her parents that she is dating him. Ling is unhappy about this, but Xiao Tu believes that being honest now will only lead her parents to pressure her into getting married. During summer vacation, Xiao Tu and Ling return home, and the latter continues to playfully tease her about making their relationship public. They attempt to have a romantic moment in Ling's bedroom, but their plans are thwarted when his father unexpectedly opens the door. Xiao Tu quickly changes her behavior to act as if they were arguing. To keep their relationship a secret, they have to find ways to meet in the neighborhood without their parents noticing. Elsewhere, Wen Hui meets up with Xiao Chu's mother and humorously refers to themselves as the soon-to-be mother-in-laws, hinting at the future marriage of the two. Xiao Chu's mother is thrilled by this prospect, but keeps it a secret from her husband. 
In reality, both parents have been noticing the growing bond between their children. To give the couple more privacy, their mothers plan a trip, though Xiaotu's father is initially reluctant to leave her home alone. During the days when their parents are away, Ling plans romantic activities for them. However, his plans repeatedly get disrupted by unexpected visits from Xiaotu's relatives and classmates. Despite the interruptions, Ling pretends to be understanding and spends time at home, focusing on programming. After waiting patiently for hours, Ling finally thinks he has the opportunity to spend quality time with Xiao Tu. However, she informs him that she's planning to watch a movie with Jiang. He even asks to join them, but to his dismay, Xiao Tu tells him that it's a girl's night out and boys aren't invited. Later, it's revealed that Jia Shi was also invited to the movie, but Jiang forgot to mention it to Xiao Tu. This upsets her heroine because she had turned down Ling earlier. Although she thoroughly enjoys her time with her friends, a picture of her with Jia Xi raises Ling's jealousy. When she returns home, Ling argues with her about why he wasn't invited. After a while, Xiao Tu apologizes and goes home, feeling sad. Realizing his mistake, Ling visits her house and pretends to be in distress to mend things between them. She also realizes her error and they quickly reconcile. Right then, he attempts to get closer to her by playfully teasing her. Meanwhile, their parents are on their way home, with Xiao Tu's father urging Ling Bo to drive faster. Unfortunately, just as their couple is about to kiss, their parents unexpectedly enter the house. While everyone else reacts with happiness and amusement, Xiao Tu's father is shocked to see them in such an intimate position and becomes angry with them. He scolds them for their behavior, only to find out that everyone else is already aware of their relationship except him. The angry father questions Ling and Xiao Tu about the length of their relationship, and she replies that they've been together for a few weeks. Back at the university, a lecture is organized by the computer science department, but Jiang convinces Xiao Tu to attend it because the speaker is rumored to be handsome. The latter hesitantly attends the lecture, and to her surprise, the speaker is none other than Ye Jun. They listen to his motivational speech, and afterwards, Ye Jun invites the residents of Ling and Xiao Chu's dormitory to have a meal together. During the meal and after learning about Ling and Xiao Tu's relationship, Ye Jun reveals that he had noticed Ling's special treatment toward Xiao Tu from their childhood. He shares the story of how Ling had asked him to send the encouraging messages to her during her university entrance preparations. Xiao Tu is thrilled by this revelation and smiles at Ling. Later, Ye Jun approaches Ling privately and offers him a job in his company after graduation. Ye Jun believes that they can achieve great things together. Ling happily accepts the offer and is excited about the prospect of working with Ye Jun on a meaningful project. In the next scene, Jiang and Xiao Chu go out to shoot a video assignment but struggle to find an interesting subject matter. Eventually, they witness a motorcycle accident involving a young man named Zhou and an elderly woman. Although Zhou is innocent, he is blamed and handed over to the police. Xiao Tu unknowingly captures the incident on the camera and discovers the truth while reviewing the footage. She and Jiang then decide to post the video online to clear the confusion and seek justice for Zhou. Surprisingly, their video project gains approval from their professor, who encourages the other students to share the video as well. After he's cleared, Zhou develops an infatuation with Xiao Tu and he starts pursuing her. He goes so far as to visit her dormitory and propose to her, but Xiao Tu firmly rejects his advances. She tells him that she already has a boyfriend and asks him to respect her boundaries and stay away from her. Unfortunately, despite the warning, Zhou continues to pursue her openly and behaves arrogantly towards Ling. His behavior creates a sense of crisis for Ling, motivating him to step up his efforts to show his affection for Xiao Tu. As a result, Ling starts bringing drinks to her dorm, engaging in loving conversations with her, and making romantic gestures. Afterward, he takes her to a home decor store and playfully envisions their future together. Xiao Chu finds everything in the store appealing and suggests buying items for their future life. Here, Ling does something unusual. He posts the couple's photo on social media, officially announcing their relationship to the world. Xiao Tu's father notices the photo and sends her a message, reminding her to take care of herself and not rush into living independently. As word about their relationship spreads around the relatively small campus, Joe becomes aware of it. However, this knowledge doesn't deter him from pursuing her and attempting to win her over. A few days later, Ling decides to intern at Yejun's company and uses his earnings to buy an apartment near Yunhai TV station where Xiao Tu dreams of working. He furnishes the apartment according to her style and preferences, incorporating the items she had liked. He then surprises her with the apartment and she is deeply moved by his thoughtful gesture. One year later, Jiang and Jia Xi have broken up, affecting the former deeply. However, both Xiao Chu and Jiang start their internships. 
Xiao too has become an intern director for Yunhai TV station, but her lack of connections leaves her with limited opportunities compared to her colleague, Wei Weian who receives more significant assignments from the department head. Xiao Tu faces the risk of not securing a permanent position due to her challenging situation. Elsewhere, Yinzi has successfully debuted as part of an overseas idol group and has gained a substantial fan following. He's about to return to China for a tour and inform Xiao Tu about it, promising to meet her when he arrives in Yunhai. In the next scene, we learn that Ling has started working at Yujun's company as a full-time employee. During a project meeting, he notices Jia Si and decides to have a talk with him about his previous relationship with Jiang. Ling then asks his friend Wen Yu to book two seats to a fancy restaurant for a meeting. Wen Yu assumes that the meeting is with Xiao Tu and informs her to get ready for it. Excited, Xiao Tu borrows a beautiful dress from her colleague and gets prepared. However, at the same time, Ling calls her and suggests that she return to the dorm and not wait for him. Puzzled by the sudden change of plans, she asks him about the reservation, and Ling informs her that the reservation is for a meeting with another man, not a woman. Intrigued, she decides to go to Ling's apartment, where his friend resides in the second bedroom. Playfully, she interrogates him about Ling's plans, but learns he is just as clueless as she is. Left with little options, Xiao Tu opts to wait for him at his apartment. When Ling eventually arrives with GSC, he explains that the two are collaborating on a travel app project. However, Xiao Tu is livid at GSC for breaking up with her friend without any valid reason. Ling tries to intervene, but Xiao Tu continues to confront GSC, unleashing her frustration and accusations against him. In response, GSC defends himself, claiming that he never intended to break up with Jiang and that he still loves her. Later, after the guest leaves, Ling takes Xiao Tu to his room and playfully flirts with her. He suggests she stay the night, given that her dormitory is already closed for the day. Amid humorous moments, they end up under the same blanket, falling asleep, snuggling. Next, during the preparations for the graduation performance, Xu Ling falls off the stage due to exhaustion and breaks her leg. Xiao Tu goes to the hospital to take care of her, despite their history of not getting along since childhood. While together in the room, they start bickering as usual. Eventually, Xu Ling opens up to Xiao Tu and confesses that she has let go of her feelings for Ling. Despite maintaining a tough exterior, she can't hide her genuine blessings for their relationship. Meanwhile, Jia Si roams around the university reminiscing about his memories with Jiang. It's clear that he deeply misses her and the time they spent together. In the evening, Ling arrives outside Xiao Tu's workplace and surprises her with his new car. However, with a sad face, he also shares that his company lost an important project. In response, Xiao Tu tries to lift his spirits, reminding him that failure is part of the process and necessary to truly appreciate success. After their conversation, he takes her to the same restaurant where he had met GSC. She, however, mistakenly assumes that Ling is about to propose marriage and searches for the engagement ring throughout the entire meal. To her disappointment, she doesn't find any ring, and later at Ling's apartment, she doesn't allow him to sleep in the bedroom. Ling makes multiple excuses to enter the bedroom, but Xiao Tu doesn't listen to any of them and sends him out. The following day, GSC seeks advice from Ling on how to pursue Jiang. Our hero candidly shares his own experience, which ended in various humorous failures. He then advises GSC to take a more genuine approach. Taking Ling's advice to heart, GSC prepares a proposal setup and decorates a location. Xiao Tu cleverly invites Jiang to join her for a walk outside and leads her to the same spot. Jiang gets excited to see the decorations, but she's unaware that she's the one being proposed to. However, upon arriving and seeing GSC waiting for her, she becomes angry and leaves the scene. GSC follows her, apologizes for his lack of contact over the year, and expresses how much he really misses her. Initially resistant, Jiang eventually softens and admits that she's not ready to give him an answer yet. As Xiao Tu's internship is nearing its end, her difficult boss assigns her the task of scheduling. To make a bold move, Xiao Tu decides to invite Yu Jun as the interviewee for this period's program. As expected, Yu Jun's episode is a huge success, drawing a much higher viewership than Wei Wei On's. However, her boss, who has been favoring Wei Wei On, claims that the scheduling was unfair and challenges her to recompete. In a moment of frustration and anger, Xiao Tu impulsively accepts the challenge. Later, she confides in Ling, and he encourages her to face the challenge head on and assures her of his support. With a renewed determination, Xiao Tu decides to regroup and confront the challenge fearlessly. Meanwhile, Jiang and GSC spend time together, and she proposes a challenge. If GSC can catch more fish than her, she will give him another chance. GSC excitedly agrees and wins the competition. It's later revealed that Jiang let him win, as she also wished to reconcile. 
In the next scene, Yinzi returns to the country for some gigs and quickly becomes an extremely popular new star. He coincidentally visits the same office where Xiao Tu is preparing for an interview. He frequently calls Xiao Tu and requests her attention, which sparks jealousy in Wei Wei On. The latter tries to spread false rumors about Xiao Tu, but to her dismay, Yinzi praises our hero in front of the executive director, catching her attention. At the end of the workday, Ling visits Xiao Tu's office to pick her up, surprising her colleagues with the revelation that she has a very handsome boyfriend. Back at Ling's apartment, she wakes up to find him sitting in front of her, calling her honey. She quickly reminds him that they're not married. To her surprise, Ling shows her a video of their parents having dinner together, during which they declare that their children are engaged. Ling then reminds her that she has a meeting. She suddenly remembers that she called Yinzi to meet with her and hurries to leave. Ling helps calm her down and suggests she change before stepping out to meet him. As the couple meet Yinzi, he playfully teases her for forgetting the meeting and boasts about his newfound fame as a star. However, Ling pays little attention to his words and dismisses them. The show then cuts to a few weeks later. During their vacation, Xiao Tu and Ling return to their hometown and find Ling's parents sorting through their belongings. Ling Bo has preserved a scrapbook containing all of Ling's achievements and awards over the years he's been away from home. This gesture helps mend the emotional distance between Ling and his parents, and the family takes a new portrait, with Xiao Tu sitting in the middle, holding Ling's hand. In the final scene, Ling brings Xiao Tu to the base of a Ferris wheel and opens up about his feelings, presenting her with a ring. Right then, we are shown flashbacks of their journey from childhood to adulthood, capturing moments from their past, their growth, and their evolving relationship. Ling expresses his deep comfort with her and how time seems to blur when they're together. The scene then jumps forward a few years, showing the two as parents themselves. Their roles have changed, but their unwavering love remains constant. The drama concludes with the two leaving their son in the care of their parents for a weekend outing. They share a kiss, capturing the same chemistry and connection they've had from the very beginning, showcasing the enduring nature of their love story.